Join us every Wednesday for Refuel at noon for a time of prayer. See the Refuel schedule on our church website. The Healthy Temple Ministry will begin a Thirsty Thursday wellness program from May the 25th to July the 13th. This program will increase the knowledge of the participants in health-related activities, community programs that will support a healthy lifestyle, and resources that will improve the health and wellness of the community. E3 is collecting new stuffed animals to donate to kids with cancer. Donations may be dropped off at the church from June the 11th to June the 19th and placed in the receptacles outside the administrative office. Get ready for our annual Youth Day Blast. Parents, sign your child up for the week-long E3 activities beginning June the 19th and ending with the celebration of our annual Youth Day on June the 25th. You don't want your youth to miss out. Get them signed up and for more information, email MJBC youthministry at gmail.com call it all youth join e3 on june 19th from 11 a.m to 3 p.m to kick off youth week and learn about the history of juneteenth as well as participate in the car wash to raise money for kids with disabilities looking for six weeks of continual academic enrichment field trips steam activities spanish sports Brazilian martial arts, and lots of fun, look no further than the Christian School Summer Camp Program, June the 20th through July the 28th, 2023. Camp ages preschool to third grade. Contact Principal Mina Pearson and Dr. Tracy Holloman for registration information. E3, Chat and Chew. Join us for a conversation on what it means to be enough. June the 21st, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. For more information, email mjbcyouthministry at gmail.com. All youth are invited to kick it at the E3 Sneaker Ball, June the 23rd, 7 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Wear your best pair of sneakers and semi-formal attire. RSVP required. Come and shop with the Women's Ministry on Saturday, July the 15th. 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. at the Clocksburg Premium Outlets. The cost is $35, which includes round-trip transportation, snack, and driver's tip. For more details, contact Sister Loveness Overton. The youth ministry is starting a mentoring program. We're seeking positive, forward, moving-minded adults to create bonds with our youth aging from 7 to 18. Virtual orientation is offered monthly. Please contact Janelle Lockley or Lady P for more information at mjbcyouthministry at gmail.com. E3 Worship Camp Summer 2023. The E3 Worship Camp will teach you how to plan worship services and learn music, choreography, songs to lead Joshua Generation services starting in September for the youth ages 4 to 11. Interested? Please scan the QR code on the flyer for more information. Throughout the week, we want you to stay connected with us by subscribing to our YouTube channel as well as Facebook and Instagram. May we all reimagine ministry work and the work of ministry. Until next time, have an amazing week. Under his care, let us pray. 
Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we, your people, have gathered here on this day at this time. Father, we've come to worship you. And your word tells us that those who worship you must worship you in spirit and in truth. And so we pray that our worship will be a sweet-smelling fragrance in your nostrils, oh God. I pray that you would bless this house. Bless everything that we do and say, so long as we do it to the glory of God. I pray that you would have your way in this place. Have your way through our pastor today as he brings forth your word, Lord, cutting as it should, Lord God. That would, it will encourage us, Lord God to be better in our walk with you, to live a better life, Lord God. Have your way. We love you. We bless you. We praise you. We honor you. We glorify. We magnify your name, Lord God. And Father God, on this day, as we celebrate fathers, Lord God, I pray that you would bless all fathers and that you would bless those children who are now without their father lord but you said that you would be a father to the fatherless and we just praise you we thank you for being a mighty god and we love you this is your servant's prayer in jesus name and the church said amen amen and thank you jesus Praise the Lord, Mount Jezreel. Praise the Lord, Mount Jezreel. Has he been good to you? Friends, stand on your feet. Please join the choir in praise and worship. We want you to shout out hallelujah. We want you to shout out thank you, Jesus. We want you to shout out bless the Lord. We want you to open your mouth.
gonna continue to worship with us. Hallelujah. I want to go I higher.
Well, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. If you want to go higher, don't play with it. Just lift your hands and say, Lord, take me higher. Higher in love. Higher in joy. Higher in peace. Higher in you. rejoice and go higher and be glad in it. How we bless God for the glorious opportunity to gather in this sacred space at this particular place to worship him in spirit and in truth. We're going to need all the queens in the house to help me on today to celebrate all fathers, all fathers, will you stand? All fathers, biological godfathers, father figures, come on, stand. Come on, let's thank God for this remnant of fathers who are present in the Lord's house. Let me say to us, Happy Father's Day. Amen. 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 And fathers following worship, you will go to my right, your left, right to the rear side of our tabernacle and temple to have your picture taken with your children. Grab your children. Grab your family. Go take your picture. Don't run off because we're printing your picture so you can leave with it on this Father's Day, amen? Amen, amen, so your picture will leave with you. If you weren't here on yesterday evening, you missed a wonderful experience as we gathered for our Father's Day dinner. Uh, it was a fun time, it was a great time of fellowship over food and with family. Amen. Amen. And that's our biological families as well as our church family. Uh, I heard someone say that it's hard to have fun as a Christian and I say the devil is a liar. You can be Christian and have a whole lot of fun. Amen. In fact, you didn't know what fun was until you became a Christian. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So definitely grateful for uh, the fellowship on yesterday. Uh, if you missed either one, the one that the women did with their high tea or the Father's Day dinner, stay tuned because all of this is pushing us towards our 150th church anniversary. Uh, and we're going to fellowship and celebrate 150 years in grand fashion. Amen. Amen, amen. So stay tuned, stay tuned. Koyania fellowship and fun is good for the soul. We received a thank you card from brother and sister Fleming and Marie Marcia Carey, the passing of their son, and we want to 
share that they send their thanks and gratitude to all of us at Mount Jezreel. As we prepare to kick off E3 week on Juneteenth, parents, make sure today following worship you grab your child or children's t-shirts. They are here. They've been packaged. Uh, they're ready to hand them to you. Now here's the disclaimer. Those t-shirts are to be worn on next Sunday for E3 Sunday, all right? Don't pop up here during the week in that t-shirt, amen. Uh, we're going to wear them together in unity and solidarity on E3, E3 Sunday. Uh, the teddy bear collection has been underway, and pardon your pastor for not coming back, but I thought we heard it in the announcement, so I want to give specificity to a germane word that has been missed, and that word is new. Y'all caught it. So let the church shout new. new. So some of those teddy bears that, that have been dropped off, <laughs> thank you, but <laughs> we need Y'all said it, I didn't. And new in every country across the world means new. All right, we on the same page. So please, ladies and gentlemen, if you can, run by five below, run by target uh, you all of the bougie crew run by Target, <laughs> run by Walmart and do us a favor grab a new teddy bear these are for uh, what I want to call cancer survivors though they may be in a hospital facility they are still surviving <laughs> these are children and we want to be a blessing to them uh, so we look forward to you grabbing those and bringing them tomorrow. What time are we getting kicked off tomorrow? 11 o'clock a.m. We're here getting kicked off uh, to collect these teddy bears and we're washing cars. And we're washing cars. Amen. So don't wear that E3 t-shirt to wash a car in, all right? All right, all right. Last but not least, you all know on first Sundays during summer sizzle, we're in our logo polos, whether it's black or purple or any other color that you purchase. And you can purchase short or long sleeve t-shirts and logo polos and any color you want, any size uh, that's in stock in the bookstore. No need to order online. You can place a paid order today in the bookstore and we'll get that shirt to you prior to first Sunday in July so that you'll have it for our Mount Jezreel communion experience. Amen? Amen. So stop by the Mount Jezreel bookstore following worship to grab your logo polos. Amen? All right, it's giving time. It's giving time. Let me, let, let, me, let, me, let me ask a, a serious interrogative here. How can you not be excited to give to a God who's giving you so much? Hold up, hold up. Even when you don't deserve it. Now let's try this again because 8 o'clock, you know what? I know what it is, D. I know what it is. It's Father's Day. And we always get the short end of the state. Mother's Day, it was packed out. Mother's Day, they were in here hollering. We couldn't sit them down. They were running victory laps. So this is a sign. This is a sign, fathers, that when you get home, don't be super excited. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, it's socks and underwear when you get there, all right? We get the same thing every year, all right? So let's try this again. It's giving time. And God loves a... There we go. God loves a cheerful giver. That's why we do it, because he wants us cheerful, excited, exuberant when it comes to giving to him. As we prepare our heads, hearts, and hands to give unto the Lord, there are five ways to which we can give. One, you can go to mountjezreel.com. Two, you can give by way of your banking institution through bill pay. Three, you can give by way of Givelify on your mobile device. Four, 
Many of us are about to bring our gifts, but if you're in the social sanctuary, you can bring your gifts to the church office Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., or you can mail your gifts to 420 University Boulevard East, Silver Spring, Maryland, 20901. As we stand all over the sanctuary to prepare to give unto the Lord, even you at home or at your office can stand with us, be a part of this worship experience, though you are socially because we live in a digital society. The physical and digital have come together. You can stand as long as you're not driving and repeat after me. I give, I give because I love God. I, love God. I, give, I give because I trust God. I, trust God. I, give, I give because I'm obedient, I'm obedient to the word, the, word, the, will, the will, and the work of God. Father, we thank you now for the gifts that we're about to receive. Let them be a blessing to those in whom we reach during ministry and mission. We thank you for all that you've done for us. We recognize every good and perfect gift comes from you. So consecrate these gifts. Bless tithe and tithe, seed and sow, offering and offerer, gift and giver. In Jesus' name we pray. People of God said amen. amen. Come on, let's give unto the Lord. Trust you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah.
may be seated in the presence of, your, of our God. Beloved, here we are again negotiating another Father's Day as a church, congregation, and community. Let me share my extreme excitement and gratefulness to be pleased to express once again congratulations to all fathers on site and online. While I ponder this annual day in our nation and many parts of the world, I could not help but think about the many persons, sons and daughters, even widows who grieve on days like today because their father or husband is no longer with us. Yet it humbles me to a great degree to be counted among the men present today who are yet alive and living and breathing. And for this, I give God praise. For those of you whose fathers have crossed the chilly Jordan and has folded up their tent and moved upstairs, I simply want to encourage you to be grateful for the fact that someone a real human being called a man. Whether he was present or not was responsible for your conception. And if no other notable way, God used that man to make your life possible and a reality. This day made me strangely think about our sitting president, Mr. Joe Biden, who today surely must be experiencing pain that most of us can't even imagine. Most of us know, and those who don't, I'll share with you that President Biden in 1972 received a phone call that rocked his world person on the other end of the phone shared with him that his wife and college sweetheart and their 13-month-old daughter had been killed in a car accident. Their two sons had sustained serious injury all the while going to pick up a Christmas tree. Bo and Hunter were in the car that day they survived while his daughter and wife did not. Bo would later precede his father in death to brain cancer at 46 years of age. Forgive me, but I cannot help but think this must be a tough time of year for one man to have to be reminded of the enormous amount of pain and loss he has sustained even if he has been elevated to the highest seat in the United States of America. Nothing in my view can take the place of your own blood of my blood, bone of my bone. Children that you brought into the world, in all actuality, it's really not supposed to be this way. Parents ideally should never have to stand or even sit at the head of the casket of the lifeless remains of their children. Kids are supposed to lay their parents into the grave. 
But sometimes the cards being dealt leave one with a bad hand. And you got to play with the hand that you've been dealt. Well, I'm pretty sure most of us, if not all of us, are absolutely saddened by this short but true introduction to a sermon. And on Father's Day. I came to the primer as my eyes were drawn to the life of another father who experienced an even greater tragedy than President Joe Biden. In the annals of biblical history and what is considered to be the oldest book of the Bible, we meet a gentleman whose circumstances are so grievous and shocking it becomes difficult to ever imagine how anyone could remain sane and maintain their composure when tragedies of this magnitude occur. The Bible presents to us a kind of man who has amassed much and apparently done a good job raising and taking care of his children and then in one amazing day, the bottom drops out. Jay, walk with me as we hear the story of a brother by the name of Job. This in Job chapter 1, beginning at verse 13. Here's how the Bible reads. One day when Job's sons and daughters were feasting at the oldest brother's house, a messenger arrived at Job's home with this news, your oxen were plowing, with the donkeys feeding beside them. When the Sabians raided us, they stole all the animals and killed all the farmhands. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger arrived with this news. The fire of God has fallen from heaven and burned up your sheep and all the shepherds. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, a third messenger arrived with news. Three bands of Chaldean raiders have stolen your camels and killed your servants. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was speaking, another messenger arrived with this news. Your sons and daughters were feasting in their oldest brother's home. Suddenly, a powerful wind swept in from the wilderness and hit the house on all sides. The house collapsed and all of your children are dead. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. Here's our focus verse. Job stood up. Tore his robe in grief. Then he shaved his head and fell to the ground and worshiped. The time that is ours to share, I want to talk this sermonic thrust in our minds, getting past your pain. Getting past your pain. Job, in the midst of all of his gruesome and turbulent circumstances yet teaches you and I how we might be able to navigate or negotiate life's unfairness and still make it past our pain. Let me drop three on you and I bid you good afternoon. First of all, we should keep in mind that Job was a confirmed Witness. Let the church say a confirmed witness. It, it's right here in the beginning uh, opening of this narrative that the Bible calls him a perfect and upright man. That Job's character is confirmed from the very outset. This brother is a God-fearing Man And everyone knew him because of that. He was blameless, perfect. And many often times when we read this and think he is without fault, that is not the case. The reality of this really means, according to the Hebrew, that he was a complete man, that Job feared and reverenced And never stop believing God. It's the Hebrew, when you look at it exegetically, that the matter of perfectness, 
perfectness or perfection does not mean that he was sinless. But what it could mean is that Job sinless. When you're a believer of God and you know and love the God of creation, you will never be sinless. But you ought to sin less. <laughs> Job's believing and balanced attitude is astonishing. He, is, he rightly understands his preceding prosperity as a blessing from God. He does not imagine he ever deserved God's blessing, even though he recognizes he was righteous, God being that he recognizes Job is righteous. That's Job chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 5. Because he knows he didn't deserve his former blessings. He knows he hadn't done anything to specifically deserve his current sufferings either. He lets us know later on that man born of a woman is of a few days and those days are full of trouble. That's Job chapter 14 verse 1. He does not take his condition to be a measurement of God's fury. Consequently, he doesn't pretend to know why God blessed him with prosperity at one time and not another. Job is literally a criticism to the so-called prosperity gospel. Name it and claim it. Call it and haul it. Grab it and blab it. Turn around three times and you're going to get a Mercedes, a Maybach, or a Mazda. Jump up and do some cow aesthetics and you're going to get a Benz, a Bugatti, or a Bentley. This is what we call the prosperity gospel where you think because you're so good, God has to bless you and God has to give stuff to you. No, God ain't got to give you nothing. He's already given you enough. And Job is exhibit number one. Yet Job is also a contradiction to the poverty gospel, which claims the opposite, that a right relationship with God implies a life of poverty. The idea that believers should intentionally emulate Job's laws is too far-fetched to appear even on the fringe of discussion. God might call us to give up everything if doing so were necessary under the circumstances to serve and follow him. If any man or woman come after me, he must first, she must first deny themselves, take up the cross and follow me daily. But the book of Job makes no suggestion that God inerrantly desires anyone to live in poverty. Job's original prosperity was a genuine blessing of God. And his extreme poverty is a genuine calamity and misfortune. It is a life, and we literally call it theodicy. Theodicy is just a $5.99 word that I picked up at Howard University School of Divinity. <laughs> that literally means this, that bad things do happen to good people. Yet in all of this, Job was aware of God, saw God's hand in his life, and never charged God with wrongdoing. This brother turned from evil and trusted God in everything which allowed God to trust him. Hear me, beloved, and hear me well. When you can trust God above all, God can trust you in all. Help your boy preach today. So no matter what happens, even if the bottom should drop out or the rug should get pulled from up under you or when the wind gets knocked out of your sail, God is still God. He's still good and he still deserves the glory. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. You don't like where you are in life right now, but let me tell you something. God is still God. God is still good. 
and God is still worthy of all the glory. I know your heart is breaking because when you leave this place, your father may not be on the other end of the table seated in his favorite seat. But let me tell you something, child of God. God is still God. God is still good and God is still deserving of all the glory. So whether I'm on the mountaintop, I'll bless his name. Whether I'm in the valley, I'll praise his name. Whether I got tears that I'm drinking for water, I still got to give him glory. Because God is still good. God is still God and he's worthy of all the glory. Job teaches us what it means to be a confirmed witness. Literally, Hunter translation is you don't turn your back on God because God ain't bad English, good understanding, turned his back on you. I forgot I'm in Silver Spring. I got to be on my best behavior. You can turn your back on God because God... I know y'all live in Bowie and Washington, D.C. God has never turned his back on you. He's a confirmed witness. But also, Joe tells us we can get past our pain when we are comfortable Weeping. I like that boy. When you're comfortable weeping, we cannot overlook the fact that he goes into a period of mourning. Sackcloth and ashes is what the text says. The customary behavior for those who are morbidly hurting and suffering loss, as did this old man. But not Joe. Joe. Job did something amazing. He doesn't hide in a secret closet. He doesn't take a walk around the corner. He doesn't even go on a long drive. He sits in the open and begins to weep. He doesn't appear to have a concern for who sees him. He isn't worried about being discovered. He doesn't even have an inkling of a concern about people questioning his sexuality. He openly, candidly, transparently, and unashamedly begins to weep. It's a clear picture of all of our human tendencies. Sometimes when we are deeply hurt, we just have to cry. There's nothing you can do about it. Crying doesn't mean we're trying to change it. It just means we are pained by it. Loss literally hurts. It's why God strategically, as I said on last Sunday, I'm tag teaming myself back in, strategically placed two pinhead holes in the sockets of our eyes called tear ducts. And tear ducts are for crying, duh. <laughs> Weeping is not just a human thing, it's a hurting thing. You don't believe me? Cry in front of your children. And because you hurt, they gonna hurt. And they gonna start crying. Job loses Losses are confirmed by his weeping and he appears unashamed yet not embarrassed by it. Our human tendency is to hide our pain. When we hurt, try to hide our hurt. We tend to hide our faces. If you don't believe me, watch me come get you. We wear dark sunglasses to a funeral to mask our misery. For what? You hurting. You lost a loved one. Why hide? Weep. It's okay. 
We wear shades to shield our appearances from our shame. We even teach little boys, not little girls, wrongly to be strong when they're hurting and experiencing pain. Yet, this is a grown man who demonstrates what it means to be comfortable with weeping. Weeping doesn't make you brothers a sissy. Crying doesn't make you a punk. It's a part of life. Jesus even cried in the garden of Gethsemane when he said, Father, not my will, but your will be done. I don't want to do this. I don't want to go through this, but nevertheless, and the Bible says uh, there were tears uh, that ran down his face like drops of blood. If Jesus cried and he's the big man, then who do you think you are where you can't shed some tears sometimes? I'm not suggesting that we should purposely reveal pain to manipulate others. You, you, know, you know who it is? Those people that every time you see them, they got to cut on the light switch of tears to try to get you to do for them what they want you to do for them. Instead of letting you do for them based on you wanting to do for them. But you still can be comfortable when your heart is hurting and your feelings have been hurt. Job clearly is comfortable letting us know how he feels about his losses. His family and children have fallen apart. His property and possessions have been destroyed. His stock market has crashed. His 401k has been taken. And the coroner's report is not favorable. And Job makes no overtures to conceal his calamity. This brother is bleeding and seems to be able to do nothing. Nothing about it but we. But then, down in his soul, help your boy, Holy Ghost. He reveals to himself and to us that there is yet something we can do. And finally, Job shows us noticeably that you can continue to worship. Worship is not new for Job. Job is what you would call a worshiper. That means in every situation, he found himself worshiping. It, it's, it's in a situation and circumstances where there is one person who could have prevented it all. And that one person didn't. Yet Job makes his way before him to God's office, the sovereign Lord, the all-powerful, and humbles himself in his presence in worship. What Job does is like going to the bank, having a conversation about a loan with a loan officer or president of the bank, and they stamp your application denied. Yet as you're leaving from talking to the said loan officer and president of the bank, you beeline and go back into the same office, sit before the same people to tell them thank you. That, that, that's what Job does as he worships God. He simply says, yes, I'm hurting, but through it all, God, thank you. Job knows that in spite of what happens, that God is still God, no matter what happens, that God is still good, even when bad happens, and that God still is great, Whatever happens, let me rewind that and press play because somebody might be asleep. That God is still good even when bad happens. That God is still God no matter what happens. And that God is still great no matter whatever happens. And in the midst of it all, at the end of the day, he's still great and greatly to be praised. That, that's why he conceded, naked I came into the world. And naked shall I leave. Hunter translation. I came into this world with nothing. And I'm leaving with nothing. The Lord gives. And the Lord takes away. Ble Help your boy preach today. Blessed be the name uh, of the Lord. I, I, I could see Job sitting uh, on that sackcloth and ashes. Shouting. Uh, Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
I, I may be going through right now, but blessed be the name of the Lord. That's a good line to reiterate. No matter what comes your way, blessed be the name of the Lord. Even if I should lose my house or my job, blessed be the name of the Lord. Even if God forbid I lose my wife and my children, blessed be the name of the Lord. If I should come terminally ill and sick in my health, we still ought to say blessed be the name of the Lord. If my friends should abandon me or y'all get tired of me and put me out, my resolve would be blessed be the name of the Lord. And I'm determined like Job to just shout from the mountaintop and even when I'm going through hell, blessed be the name of the Lord. Joseph was, Job was a worshiper and worship was what Job did. And I can hear Job as I bid y'all good day and leave you with seven minutes on the clock. I can hear him say, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation purchased by God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. I had to cry sometimes. I had some sleepless nights, but this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Oh, that means through it all, good and bad. All the day long. We're standing all over the sanctuary. You can get past your pain when you're a confirmed witness. Don't turn your back on God because God ain't turned his back on you. No matter how rough or how bad the circumstance or situation may be, there's one common denominator when you read the book of Job that God is still there. You can get past your pain. Can I help y'all? Welcome to the office of Dr. Hunter. You may lay down on the sofa. Let me help you. You can get past your pain. When you comfortably weep. Put your hands on yourself and say, it's okay to cry. It's, it's, it's okay. I know your marriage is not what you thought it was going to be. You thought it was going to be a white house on the picket fence, little house of prairie. And it turned out to be nightmare on Elm Street. But it's okay to cry. I know your kids don't act like you brought them into this world. And you've had to tell them many a times, I brought you into this world and I can take you out. But then go on and just cry. I know that doctor's report was not favorable and you nervous. It doesn't mean you don't have faith. It means you human. You can cry. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. But this is the big thing you got to do. You got to keep worshiping. Pastor, what's worship? Worship is lifting your hands before a all-powerful God and telling him how much he means to you. You can say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I appreciate you. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I'm struggling, but I still sense your presence. I still feel your hand. Lord, I need you. But God, even if you don't show up when I want you to show up, I'm still going to trust you. I'm still going to wait on you. I'm not going to turn my back. I'm going to take my hands off of it. And I'm going to let you have full control, full reign. Because God, even while I'm worshiping you, you working on me. So thank you right now, God, in the name of Jesus, for being good, for being great, for being generous, for being an on-time God. I bless you. I love you. I appreciate you. I honor you. You got to worship him. Somebody's listening to me right now and you want, you desire, you need a relationship with the God of Job and Jameson and I'm going to help you get there. 
All you got to do is admit you're a sinner. Hey, guess what? I just told you. You're not sinless, but when you connect with Christ, you're going to sin less. So all you got to do is say, Lord, I need you in my life. I made some mistakes. I can't fix myself. I need you to fix me. If that's you, just walk this way. Just say, I believe, God, that you died for my sins. And I'm confessing and I'm committing to you. Because even in my waywardness, you were still there. Because your word says you let the rain fall on the just and the unjust. And God, I've been so unjust. But now I need you to just step in my life. So come on. I'm waiting on you, man, woman, boy, or girl. We're offering you this petition. We're giving you this invitation to accept Christ as your Lord and personal Savior by faith. Come on. Wherever you are, just walk this way. Walk this way. If you're watching online, there's a flyer. There's a QR code. Scan it. It would direct you to our church's website, mountjezreel.com, to the Join Us tab. Fill that out. And when you fill that out, you'll connect with the church and we'll connect with you in 48 hours to tell you the next steps. So if that's you, my brother, my sister, come on, walk this way. Fill that out. We're waiting on you. Man, woman, boy, or girl, don't put off for tomorrow what you can do today. We give you this opportunity. We give you this option. This is your choice to make. But I can tell you, Christ is waiting on you. I would love to be your pastor. I would love for you to be a part of this fellowship. So come on. Come on. On this Father's Day. This is my story. Praising my Savior. Praising my Savior. All the day. Come on. Come on. We're waiting on you. This is... This is, this is my song. Praising my Savior. Praising my Savior. All the day long. The day last call, last call. This is my story. This is my, this is my song. This is my song. Praising my Savior. All the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Mount Jezreel, we have entered to worship, we exit to witness. I want us to repeat and recite our vision and mission so we know our responsibility as we leave from this place. Repeat after me, Mount Jezreel is, Mount Jezreel is a disciple-making congregation, a disciple -making congregation that, loves God that loves God and loves people. And loves people. Mount, Jezreel is Mount Jezreel is committed to the master, to the master. Connected, through ministry, connected through ministry, and concerned about mankind. The grace of our Lord and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of us until we see him face to face. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we say amen. Mount Jezreel, I love you and there's nothing you can do about it.